Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> o Christ, the Word, make us worthy to prepare ourselves to celebrate the feast of your miraculous birth, when you reconciled the heights and the depths. Fill our hearts with the faith of those holy ones who awaited your coming throughout all generations. May your love and peace reign within us that we may glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the Ancient of Days, born of the Father before all ages, who at the appointed time took flesh from the Virgin Mary. By his birth he fulfilled the revelation of the Holy Spirit, spoken by the prophets. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory to you, O only Son, you are the hope of the nations, awaited by all generations. You are without beginning or end, yet at the appointed time you chose to be born as a child. You are great and the mighty one, yet you became man without any change to your divinity. You enriched creation, yet you became poor. And your mother sang spiritual songs to you as she carried her, you in her arms. O child, O ancient of days, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the shepherds of Bethlehem and the Magi from the east came to worship you, and the angels gathered to sing to you. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. The church throughout the world prepares for your birth with joy and gladness. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your face shine upon us as it shined in glory upon the shepherds. Fill our hearts with perfect joy and give us an understanding of the mystery of your plan of salvation. With all who have prepared to welcome your feast, we praise, glorify, and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever. O 
Lord who is coming among us, accept our incense and give us your grace. Protect your flock that awaits your coming and prepares for your birth. Have mercy upon us and upon our departed, that we may be worthy to enter into your kingdom and raise glory and thanks to you forever. Kadi shant aloho, kadi shant chayel tono, kadi shant lo moho yuto. Mshi ho deti led mehem bat tawid itracha malayim kadi shat aloho kadi shat chayel tono kadi shat lo moho yuto. She hold the tea led men, but the weed it raham alai. Kadi shant aloho, Kadi shant chayal tono, Kadi shant lo mo yubuto. She hold the tea led men, but the weed it raham alai. Holy and immortal Lord, sanctify our minds and purify our consciences, that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. Jesus lies in a manger, though he is the Lord of all. Angels join earth in wonder at the Son of God made man. Praise to you, born of Mary, it is one. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness, through the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among you are also, who are also called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I give thanks to my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith, faith is heralded throughout the world. 
God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in proclaiming the gospel of his Son, that I remember you constantly, always asking in my prayers that somehow, by God's will, I may at last find my way clear to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may share with you some spiritual gift, so that you may be strengthened. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by one another's faith, yours and mine. Praise be to God always. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down on the righteous one. Alleluia. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and we ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. You may smile to listeners, the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen in it, glory and thanks. Word, living God. The Apostle Matthew writes, the book of genealogy of Jesus the Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab, Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Salmon, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed became the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abiyah, Abiyah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat the father of Yoram, and Yoram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Yotam. Yotam the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealatiel, Sha'alatiel, the father of Zarubabel, and Zarubabel, the father of Abiud, Abiud, the father of Eliakim, Eliakim, the father of Azor, who was the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Eliud, 
Eliud the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matan. Matan became the father of Jacob. Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Messiah, 14 generations. This is the truth, peace be with you. Concerning his son, who was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This is, of course, the very beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And what St. Paul is doing is he's taking the classical form of letters in the classical age, in which you announce who you are, you will proclaim who you're talking to, and then you begin the rest of your letter. It's very similar to what we learn to do doing formal letters. We make our address, we put the addressee's address, and then we start our letter. So what St. Paul does here, and he's writing about the year 58 from Corinth, early months, because he makes reference to the, uh, pass the Passover coming. And in these first months, he's writing to the Romans, whom he's never met yet, in order to lay out a foundation. And what he says in these first 12 lines is, if I can get free, my intention is to come and visit you, to see you. So it's very simple what these 12 lines are actually meant to be doing. They're just laying out St. Paul's intention. So why is this chosen for Genealogy Sunday. Well, St. Paul talks about his gospel, these good announcements, the good tidings that are surrounding the Christ. And he says concerning his son, who was made of the seed of David in the incarnation, our Lord is integrated into a historical present. Not just simply an abstract idea that Jesus is here and all of that, but St. Paul is emphasizing the fact that the Messiah comes into a historical continuity. That's why we have this gospel, which is the beginning of St. Matthew, which was so brilliantly said to me a year and a half ago when I arrived. But Father, it's so boring. If you go back and look at the first chapter of St. Matthew, there are reasons what he's doing to lay out the structure. And remember, St. Matthew is writing for Jewish converts to Catholicism. So what he's doing in the very beginning of his gospel is reminding us of the historical continuity that the Messiah is the son of David. This child who is born that we celebrate in the next days is a child who is born to a family, to a people, to a place, to a nation, and in time. This is different from all the other, almost every other religion other than Islam, in that we can pinpoint when God entered the world. They're not just myths and stories of once upon a time. This and this happened. And so the, the importance of Genealogy Sunday is the revelation of this man who was born to Mary of Nazareth, who is also God. And so it's central to St. Paul, which is why, as he's describing himself and then addressing the people that he wants to speak with or write to, he uses two terms. One, 
slave and the other obedience, two words that we really don't like in the 21st century. He begins the letter by saying that I, Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ. Now, when we hear the word slave, it has all the bad connotations, which for the most part it should. But we forget the fundamental idea of what slavery was. Not everyone was being scourged and beaten. What St. Paul is using the word servant or slave in this case for is to indicate the fact that I, my service belongs to Jesus Christ. What I do, my life belongs to him. But there's a reciprocity. Now, part of the horrors and why we, why we hate slavery is because of the horror stories that we know of. We've all seen pictures of the scarred backs. But that's not every single slave. The slavery has what St. Paul is indicating, the reciprocity. If my service is rendered to this man, Jesus Christ, it is also that he owes me the protection, the life, the shelter, which is reciprocated. So he uses this term very much by choice, this idea of being a slave of our Lord, because it indicates for him the fact that his life is totally oriented and belongs to this Messiah. It's a very strong term. But it's a term which is echoed throughout the whole Old Testament and the prophecies. Which is why he says that it's been given to me now for those things which have been hidden and only revealed through the prophets now to be able to announce to the world. It's the kerygma. The proclamation of what God is trying to accomplish not just simply in an airy-fairy world of myths but concretely in history. That's why, as we mentioned last week, of the unfolding of the divine mystery, St. Paul is speaking of it concretely, concerning his son, who was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. And what he's doing for the Romans is he's saying, and of course, everyone who is hearing this letter is all baptized. They're all Catholics. They are all Christian. Everyone who's listening to this letter to the Romans that he's writing so he's not proclaiming the faith to them in that sense. These are not people who are hearing the faith for the first time. This letter is being written to people who are already established, consecrated in their baptism as Christians. But he says that the reality of this Messiah who is made son of David has been declared and established as the son of God Oristentos in the Greek. It means constituted. He doesn't become the Son of God. But it is proclaimed that he is Son of God according to the spirit of holiness which he has received by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. So we have our Lord's existence, the mystery from before all time, which is now being proclaimed in time, in history. That's the nativity and who is proclaimed in glory and constituted in that glory as Son of God by that spirit of holiness in the glory of the resurrection. So he's saying it's that whole mystery being revealed which that gospel being proclaimed to you that you know. Then he goes on to the Romans, to those who are beloved by God at Rome. It's a beautiful term because he says, I'm writing to you because you have been loved by God in this mystery. Who are called to be saints. That it's not just simply the fundamental consecration of baptism, which is sufficient, but it is the total turning towards this proclamation of holiness in the glory of the resurrection. And so what St. Paul is reminding the Christians in Rome is that the baptism is a beginning. But it begins a path which turns towards this holiness. And so in using the term aristentos of being constituted for the proclamation of the Son of God in the glory of his resurrection, he's reminding the Romans, you have been established by your baptism. 
But you are meant to be radiant. You are called to holiness. You are meant to be exemplars of this life of glory. So it's a very short 12 lines as the introduction. And then the next part of the chapter, he rips into the Greeks and the Romans as being inexcusable, but you can read the second half yourselves. But he says, it's been given to me in this calling to this apostleship to bring about among the nations of the world. Go back and read the first prayer of our liturgy this morning in our missals. That all the nations, all the people of Israel and the non-Israelites have waited for this moment for the Christ, the Messiah, to be born into the world. And St. Paul says, now it is given to me the gift, the grace of apostleship to bring about in the nations the obedience of faith. Which is that second word that we really don't like, but as we've mentioned over and over again, obedience just means the ability to listen, to hear. And that is, has to be the basis of the foundation of holiness. Holiness is not that I become radiant in glory from one day to the next. Holiness is the slogging through day after day of fidelity to the grace of God within this sanctification of his name, as it says in the letter to the Romans, by the ability to hear. Why am I faithful each day? Because of obedience. Why is holiness possible to us? Because of obedience. We have the ability to hear the voice of God and to respond to that love by which he called us in Rome. And that's why he brings about this fact of the vocation and the calling in love must terminate within holiness. And that's why the last detail, when you have these formal letters, you would wish the person's salutation, you would wish them health and well-being. St. Paul changes that letter in the classical format. He wishes them rather grace from God our Father and peace from Jesus Christ. So instead of just well-being and health, which are good things, he wishes more which is transcendent. Peace and sanctification. Peace and grace. And then when he finishes, it's more understandable why he says, if I can get free, I'm going to come to Rome so I can meet you. Because I have so many things I have to tell you. And then he stops himself in the middle of that thought. And he says, no, so that when it comes, you can also speak to me. Because your faith at Rome is heralded by everybody all around. They know how faithful you are in Rome. It's glorious. And so I have things to say, yes. But more importantly, when I get there, you will also be able to share with me. And together we will encourage one another on that path. It's a beautiful sign. And it is the notion of what the community of church is. It's wonderful to eat kibbe together. We love it. But that's not the purpose of church. The purpose of church is this mutual encouragement of fidelity as we walk the path of listening to the gospel so that we can all terminate and finish the goal in the kingdom of glory. That's the purpose why we're here. And then on occasion we have a party. But that's why St. Paul finishes, and it's the last line you have in the epistle today. But if I can come, I will come to be with you so that I may be comforted, strengthened with you, together with you, among you, by that which is common to us both, your faith, and mine, and we'll all be slaves together in the obedience to the gospel because our goal is the therapeutic healing and finishing in the glory of the children of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father of all. Telvot ma debhe da loho, valvot a loho da khali tamyo. Vengam su ho taivu ta oche, udel vaitok vesku da tchayevlo, o kore Accepted the offerings of our ancestors, now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day. Especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed. Especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. We remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue with an after St. John on page 815, 815. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father, you are true love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with your hearts and souls, and with the holy kiss, worthy of your blessed name, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. That each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Before your majesty, send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary, that we may glorify you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation, and he gave us his holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us, because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One with your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. Son and your Holy Spirit, one and indivisible in nature, and you sanctify all things by your divine power. For our salvation, you sent your Son into the world, descended, became flesh, suffered, and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. 
انصاب لحم و بیدا و کاری شد تو و بارخ و کاده وقت و یبل ترمیتا و کار و مارا صاب خل مهنه خل خوب اونو دنیتا فخر و دیر دحل و فکون و حل و فساگیه می تقصه و می تیهب خلصان حوم و حای در قلم علمی خوکن و آلکس و دم سیخ و من حمر و من مایو بارخ و کاده یا بل تدمی تاو کار و مارا سابش تاو مهنه بل خوب اونو دنی تاو دموه دیر دیاتی کی خدا تو تحت و فایکون و خلاف ساگیه می تیشد و می تیهب خوصاین حوبه و خواهی در قلم علمی Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this body and drink this blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O oh Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation, and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sin, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Adorio. Anin morio, anin morio, unite mor rojo chayu katisho. Unachen alainu ar korbono ono. and he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these 
holy mysteries, sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them. Cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Rashada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nisrala Peter, our retired Patriarch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and to profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offering upon this altar, and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Marin, Saint Charbel, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day, and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for their. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, you are the pleasing oblation, 
who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. God the Father, you accept prayers and answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and with clear consciences, praying, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil. For you have power over all, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord. For he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness, and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace, dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy, give them life. By your cross, bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. So just a brief note, you've noticed the new sound system. I just ask that you pray for the donor, who wishes to be anonymous, who had been fed up with the old system that would go on and off continually during readings and prayers and everything else. And so, when this individual came back and just said, it doesn't work. Oh, that's what happens. We get old, we don't work. We're on and off, we click on and off. We... So, I said the estimate was for $15,000. You want to buy it? That's a new system. And then the individual eventually said, yes, I'll pay for that. It was slightly less than fifteen, but that was the estimate a year ago. So this person, it cost about a $14,000 system, so I think this individual is totally worthy of your devoted and continuing prayers for his intention. So, go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.